So I'm going to start. I'm going to say a quick prayer. And uh, for those that, that some are going to be here that, that are not aware of, of our, our culture or it's new to them or um, and there are others that, that know, know uh, some of the Anishinaabek, uh, Anishinaabek culture. Um, it's one of those things that I didn't learn. Uh, inherently, I did. And I'll, I'll tell you that along the road. Um, but formally, I didn't because at one particular time, uh, all of our ways of knowing and doing were, were cons they were made illegal by the Canadian federal government. But that's another story uh, I'll get into later on. So smudging really is uh, getting us ready to do the things that we're, we're, we need to do and um, to um, uh, ground us and, and um, get us ready, like I said. Uh, and when I smudge, I'm using sage this morning or this afternoon. Um, I'm I still, I, I think I'm still back on the, uh, uh, the other time thing. I'm still an hour behind. Um, so when I smudge, it's uh, Elder Vern Harpo used to call it, uh, uh, he didn't like the word smudge. He thought it was kind of uh, uh, slang. Uh, it's, it's, so basically re really what it is, it's a purification ceremony. So we're, we're getting our mind and our hearts, our spirits ready to, to uh, do uh, what we need to do in a good way. So when I smudge, I smudge my ears so I can hear good, the, the good intent of the people. I smudge my mouth so I can speak with good intent. I smudge my eyes so I can see the good intent in other people. And I smudge my, my spirit so I can feel and, and have good intent for, for the, those that are, are, I'm beginning this journey with or um, the day with. And so I'm going to say a, a quick prayer. Quick way, Kachimanado. Magizi Disney Cause of Gonkwa Nation Dijiba, make an act to do them. Get your do. I say, Chief Minkwich, thank you for uh, the great spirit for um, uh, giving us uh, these teachings today. And they are not my teachings. I am just uh, passing on the knowledge that was passed on to me from our ancestors and, and from Gachimanado. Uh, the great, great spirit or God. Um, so I want to pray for the people, long life, prosperity and health, for the little ones to keep them safe and to nourish, nourish them along the way, both uh, mentally, spiritually, physically and emotionally. And that we, uh, it is our, our purpose and, and our obligation to pass on these teachings to the young ones as, as, uh, as soon as possible when they come into this this world. Um, I say to Miigwech, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's get started. Before we begin, does anybody have any questions? No, okay. Um, so I am going to put this up. And again, I always kind of, I will check with you guys to make sure you can see that. Everybody see that? Yes, you guys see it? Yeah, you yes. can see it now? Okay, good. Um, okay. I do have a, a timer on because I know we're running. Uh, um, kind of a, a tight schedule. So if you hear uh, vibrating at about five to one, uh, you'll know that we have about five minutes left. Okay, so uh, this is the medicine wheel and I start with the medicine wheel um, because all our teachings, all our uh, Anishinaabe teachings are, are, are uh, found within uh, the medicine wheel. And the medicine wheel um, uh, really is, is, uh, holds all our ways of knowing and doing. And when we, we uh, go forward uh, today, you'll see that the medicine wheel just doesn't represents uh, uh, indigenous people here in, or the Anishinaabe people. It, it represents all human beings on this earth. 
and uh, it represents uh, all the people that uh, Gibbana to the Great Spirit or God uh, created. Um, you may have seen uh, this at Toronto City Hall, uh, Nathan Phillips Square. There's a there's a medicine wheel there beside the, the, the name of Toronto, and it's uh, it's very very important um, to see uh, the understanding of, of this medicine wheel. So when we look at it straight on, um, it, it has uh, four direction, actually seven directions. And I'll get that in in a minute. But the different colors on the medicine wheel represent the, the, all the original people, uh, all human beings on this earth. Um, and I'm going to give you a real Cole's note of, the, of this, if you guys even know what Cole's notes are anymore. But um, it is, uh, uh, represents the, the four original nations here on, on earth that uh, God created or, or Getchi Manadu created. Um, and uh, when they, we were created and, and put on this earth, we were the last uh, things to put on this earth by Kitchen Manor to her uh, God um, as human beings. And um, the medicine reel really represents a balance of all things. And when we go around from one to the, to the next, um, uh, Kitchen Manor to her God uh, gave us responsibilities and sent us in this, this, uh, different directions on this, this earth. So each color represents the original uh, uh, people in what direction that, that God, Kitchi Manadu, sent them in. And so when we, we start at, at the bottom, it's uh, the Red Nation uh, was sent to uh, the south. And uh, Kitchi Manadu also um, uh, gave each responsibility. So the Red Nation, that would be the Indigenous people here, in, in, um, were sent to the south, and their uh, purpose was to let, learn about rock, earth, um, everything about how it interacts, how it's uh, uh, for human beings, what it represents, all those particular things that they were to learn about the earth. Um, and when we go up on the left-hand side, we go to the west direction. Um, and, uh, and the Black Nation was to learn about water, um, everything to do with water, how it connected, how, how um, how everything is connected to water, all about water. And we go to the north, uh, the white nation. And uh, sorry, guys. Um, the, the, the white nation. And uh, the, their responsibility was to learn everything about fire, energy, and, and, and uh, and then to the east, uh, the Yellow Nation were to learn about air, wind, all that has to do and how connected uh, that. Uh, and when you look at those four responsibilities of the four original nations, uh, it represents the four elements here on Earth, air, water. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's a COVID uh, uh, fuzziness. Uh, uh, air, water, earth, and, and uh, um, my goodness. <laughs> Anyways, I'll get back to you guys on that. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Anyways, what, and the responsibilities were to uh, uh, people, were, the four nations were, were, were supposed to come back and teach these uh, uh, things to uh, uh, each other. Um, and, and that's another time in regards to our, our, our teachings. Um, but the medicine wheel is about balance of all those particular things to live a good life and live as a good human being. And, and uh, it really represents um, spirit uh, in a way um, that, that to, we are spiritual beings living on this earth for a very short time here to learn things. And uh, um, so all our ways of knowing and doing. And I said the seven directions, you have the middle, uh, a small circle in the middle, and that is the individual or uh, that spirit of that individual. Um, and then up 
into the sky and, and down into the earth. I have two computers here, so. So the seven sacred teachings or the seven grandfather teachings, and this is a, a painting of, of those, those grandfathers. Um, and the grandfathers were, were uh, given the responsibility by Ketchiman, so or the great spirit or God, um, to look after the human beings on, on this earth. They were very powerful spirits. And I'm, I'm just going to read this. Uh, the, the creator gave the seven grandfathers put the responsibility to watch over the people. In this recounting of the story, the seven grandfathers, seeing that the people were living a hard life, sent a messenger down to the to earth to find someone who could tell uh, what Ojibwe or Anishinaabe life should be and bring bring him back. And uh, the uh, the um, uh, messenger went uh, in the all all four directions, uh, searching for this this uh, person that 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 could do this and. Uh, um, they searched for six days uh, and, and finally found a, a, a baby um, uh, that they would teach um, um, these, these lessons about how to be a good human being and what that means uh, on this earth. Um, and they, they picked a baby because the, the baby was still uncorrupted by our... our uh, uh, the, the growth and, and, and uh, of the earth and, and the people on it, it, it was innocent and, and uh, was to learn these seven teachings um, from beginning before knowing anything else. And all these seven teachings, uh, they, they vary from, uh, from maybe nation to nation, community to community, but the, the, the values within those, um, uh, these teachings, um, was to teach us how to live a good life on this earth um, and, and, and uh, to be respectful and, and, and that, but the teachings were that. So the, uh, the um, Kitchi Manado gave the, the little baby uh, 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 an assistant or a, uh, a, a teacher to, to a helper to take them all around uh, the world to show them the world. Um, and uh, 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 when he came back uh, uh, after seven years, um, he was uh, the the helper brought him to the uh, uh, seven um, uh, grandfather. Um, sorry, just gotta let these people in. I think the grand uh, the grand. Uh, The, the lodge was uh, of all knowing, all of knowledge that uh, uh, people had um, in um, uh, this worldly given us to us from uh, the, the great spirit, uh, Gitche Manado or God. And, uh, um, and there's a, 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 an understanding of what these, these um, uh, through most nations, uh, in regards to these particular teachings and the values that, so there really are our Anishinaabe values, it's our Anishinaabe value system that we're looking at through the grand uh, seven grandfather through the, the seven sacred uh, teachings, and um, so once they they came back into the lodge after uh, the, the lodge of knowledge and, and the seven grandfathers, uh, they were sent out uh, and they asked a another helper uh, to go with this, this little boy. <clears throat> and, and in each, uh, they, they stopped seven times and they were to explore all of Turtle Island and, and the, the world. And, and they, they stopped seven times to give, uh, uh, in each one they met a spirit who gave them uh, one of these grandfather teachings uh, along the way. And uh, by the time he had got to the seventh one, um, he was he was uh, full grown. Uh, he was he was man getting ready to go back into the spirit world. Um, uh, 
Each grandfather teaching is a gift of the Anishinaabe carry a potential tool for living a good life. Our understanding is that as we use these gifts, our experience of living improves. Using these gifts in our lives is an ongoing challenge for each of us, requiring attention, discipline, and perseverance. And when I started using um, and was taught about the seven grandfather teachings, I was taught it in a way, not in a, in a verbal way, but in, in a, a way that was uh, given to me uh, by my, my uh, family and in, in the values that, that they uh, had. Because at the time, again, it was, uh, it was not a, a good thing uh, to uh, be doing our ceremonies or teachings because they had been made illegal. Um, but, but it was through behavior of my family and the treatment and the nourishing of my family. Um, uh, and I have an understanding of those innately. Um, and uh, when I started to learn of them, I realized uh, uh, how my upbringing was, uh, was uh, um, filled with, with uh, these teachings. And that's just a look at the seven grandfathers. And here I'm going to begin with, and, and they sound really uh, easy, uh, but I've learned to know, and I'm, I'm, I'm learning more and more every day about how these, these teachings um, uh, help live a good life. And I'm, I'm getting a, a deeper understanding of it all the time. So the first grandfather teaching is, is, is signified from the buffalo. And, and it, it is about who we are as human beings. Um, it's respect. Uh, it's to honor the, uh, all creation is to have respect. And one of the things that um, one of the things when we look at respect is uh, we are not uh, uh, superior to any being on this earth. Um, we are equal and, and they are equal to us. And, and that's, that's uh, uh, all these things on the earth, the, the animals, the, the swimmers, the flyers, the, the plants, um, the rocks, the earth, all these things, the trees, all these things uh, are, were created by Gechi Manado uh, and and uh, so we are part of all those things. We're related to them. They are our relatives. And as human beings, we need to have uh, respect for them because uh, we are all together. We have our own purposes here, but we're all connected. And, and we re refer to these as all my relations uh, here on earth, all these things that, that God created and, and made our relatives. We have to have uh, treat them with respect, and and uh, to honor all creation is, is to have respect. And living with that, these 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 teachings, uh, you will see um, um, how respect is is uh, about knowing your place. I remember uh, growing up, and my my parents, my my aunties and uncles would say to us, uh, uh, me and my cousins, saying that you're, you're, you're not better than anybody else, but you're just as good as. And that was drilled into us that uh, this respect for all, all of, uh, of uh, a creation. Bravery is, is represented by the bear and, and it, it, bravery is, is something that they have to um, sorry, they have to, uh, when you know something is wrong, you have to be brave to do the right thing. And it takes courage to do the right thing for all sorts of, of things. We know in our spirit or our heart that when we do something that is not right or we see something that is not right, um, that uh, we have to be brave um, and, and should do something 
in regards to it, whether it's our own actions that we did something wrong, we have to own that and we have to uh, live up to it and, and to face the consequences with, with courage uh, and, and it's known as bravery. So, and, and the bear represents that, that, that bravery that, that, that uh, comes with the, the, the bear's uh, ways of knowing and doing. Um, so your inner strength, you have to develop that. It's very, very easy to ignore um, uh, sometimes when we're, we're doing something that we know, we, we feel it in here, in, in our spirit. Um, and uh, uh, that spirit, we can ignore it or we can listen to it. And, and sometimes when we, we want something so badly or we have done something wrong and we don't uh, want to uh, uh, face the consequences or if we're fearful of facing those consequences, um, it hurts our spirits if we don't. We carry that baggage that we have, have had uh, that we have done something wrong. And uh, we start to begin to make, make it, uh, it's easier to, to ignore that spirit. Uh, Elder Vern Harper, and I've heard uh, uh, Elder Pauline Schert, or uh, Lovell uh, Pauline, um, talk about um, that there's no such thing as a gut feeling. It, it is our, our spirit letting us know what is right and wrong. And uh, um, sometimes we forget or we don't, we're not brave enough to, to so we convince ourselves what we're doing is the, the okay. But it does hurt our spirit as we grow uh, in, in this lifetime and it becomes easier and easier to do that. So bravery is, is very, very important uh, as are all these teachings. They all go, go together. You can't do one without the other. Um, they're all interactive. And you see this character up here, um, um, it, that's uh, Gichisabe or Bigfoot, as we like to know. And, and uh, Gichisabes were, were spiritual beings that, that I've been taught that are, are here on earth to, to look after and, and, uh, the human beings. And uh, the story that uh, I uh, uh, have a friend uh, and he, uh, he was down in Minnesota doing ceremony, um, had driven down there. Um, and uh, he was in a sweat lodge and it was a, a late at night sweat lodge, but he got a message that there was a family emergency home from there. And uh, he, uh, so he had to drive all the way from Minnesota back to the Six Nations here uh, near, near Brantford. And uh, he took care of things and they had, he went, home he drove all night and and he went to bed um, and he woke up uh, and, and uh, later in, in that evening or early morning and there was a Gichisabi sitting in a chair uh, in his bedroom and uh, this is the story he related to me that Gichisabe uh, drove with him to take care of him on on the way home to keep, keep him safe and uh, so uh, Honesty is, is uh, it's connected to bravery because you have to be uh, 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 um, honest to, to, uh, to be, be able to face what you need to face, whether it's with yourself or with, with somebody uh, uh, else or other human beings. Um, and, and it is to to walk in this, through this life with integrity is to know honesty. So if you're uh, uh, honest with yourself, and sometimes that takes bravery, that takes courage, and that takes respect for not only you, um, you're taking re responsibility for yourself um, because it is very, very easy to convince ourselves not to do the right thing, um, uh, but, uh, it enables you to not carry that baggage of, of bad decisions or um, uh, things that, that you may have done that weren't right. And I'll get to more of this in a, a, a few minutes because they all kind of go together. And the wolf uh, is, is represents humility. 
and and the wolf, if you you know, is in the pack system, they will come out and um, uh, they will do uh, sacrifice for the pack, and they do that with uh, um, uh, honor to do that. So to give back to the community um, and think about other people first and not yourself. Always think about everything first before yourself. And, and part of this is to know that, that uh, we're all a part of cre uh, creation uh, that uh, Kachibanadu cre created. And, and that um, we need to have the understanding that we are part of not power over or we're a part of, but that we have responsibilities as, as human beings to look out for all our relations here um, and ourself. Um, so when we look at uh, these particular teachings, our understanding of them um, really uh, deepens and grows as, as we put them into practice. Um, so uh, part of it is that I think, um, and I've been taught that our purpose here on earth, again, like I said, is, is to learn how to be a, a, a good human being. And, and uh, these are the ones that gifted from our ancestors to us and brought down brought uh, uh, with us to learn, to know how to, to um, live a good life uh, in this world and be part of. Um, love, uh, knowing love is to know peace. So love is, is one of the greatest teachers. It's, and it's one of the hardest teachings because um, um, when you do know love, uh, you know peace. And love is, is, is when we say the word to somebody, I love you, that is a very, very powerful uh, um, uh, message to give your love uh, to, to other human beings and, and to all our relations and to think about them and to put them uh, before yourselves. Um, and and uh, it is reciprocal when we start to know love. We give our unconditional love and they also, you get that love back when you do that, when you live love unconditionally. And, it, and then you know, like I said, that uh, it, it gives peace to your heart um, uh, and to your spirit. And wisdom is to cherish knowledge. Um, wisdom is kind of... Uh, given to us for the good of the people. And through the, the, the beaver here, it represents wisdom. And, and the beaver has uh, uh, gifts, as all of us have gifts. All, all of uh, our, create, our, our relations here have gifts. And it is taught to us to use those gifts to, to, uh, because you have a responsibility for those gifts uh, to use them because they were given to you by the creator. And everybody has different um, uh, ways of, of using those gifts um, to, for, to help out. Um, and, and, and the beaver, when we do have fires, the fire, horse fires or whatever, the beavers move in and they start to clean things up uh, and, and op open up the waterways again. And, uh, they're, 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 uh, and so the other animals come back and the plants start to grow again. And, but the, the beavers, uh, 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 gift are, are those two front teeth that they chew and they, they control the waterways and really they control um, the landscape for human beings and for all other. So that is their gift. But if they didn't use those teeth to chew those trees and stuff, those teeth would be uh, continue to grow and, and grow so long that they would be ineffective. That they, would, they would basically die. So um, uh, the more you use the gift, the more wisdom you gain and, and throughout your life. And turtle, I'm part of the turtle clan, Mikanak, um, and uh, 
the way when is truth and, and truth is to know all of these things speak the truth do not deceive yourself or others and that's what i talked about with honesty that, that you have to be honest with yourself and with other people but yourself uh, uh, especially um, because we can make decisions based on not being honest with ourselves um, whether it's taking a job because uh, uh, you may not know in your, your spirit that's the right thing to do, but it's got a big title and you feel uh, your ego kind of gets in the way, things like that. Or even in an argument with with uh, uh, your partner or your spouse or brother, sister, or cousin, whatever it may be. Um, it's about um, doing the right thing, the truth. Uh, it's not about winning an argument. It's about uh, putting um, like like... Uh, the wolf, humility, is putting other people first uh, in regards to, uh, to making it a win-win, be respectful and be truthful. And uh, here is, uh, I made a diagram of, of a tree. And these are the seven sacred grandfather teachings down within the roots. And when you start using those um, uh, teachings on a regular basis all the time you start to think that way um, and it's about putting uh, understanding your responsibilities and that you are um, uh, learning to to learning wisdom and love and truth through these all these four or uh, four and, and, and seven teachings and what it gives us as we go through life, when you look at this tree, the roots are there and it grows. And what does uh, uh, every human being really want? They want to know the truth. They want to have love and they want to have wisdom. And these particular teachings gives us, gives us a, a roadway to do that. So it's such a, a great gift. I, I, I remember being, uh, a couple of times, I'll give you a couple of examples of, of different things. My, uh, my father was one uh, to um, go to, he didn't have much in his life. He, he was, uh, uh, he grew up in a, a, a very isolated uh, logging community uh, area. Um, prejudice was, was high and then, uh, but he was happy. He had uh, uh, seven brothers and sisters and family all around, and, and uh, they grew up with nothing, basically around the, uh, the uh, Great Depression. And uh, he would, throughout his life, um, he'd love to go to garage sales or a little, and he'd buy these little trinkets for, oh, so-and-so might like that, I'll pick that up, or, and then he would go and, and you know, down to my aunties and uncles and cousins and and he'd have this little trinket and somebody might say, oh, that's really nice. Um, and he said, well, here, you can have it. And, and uh, the, the whole family was kind of like that. And somebody asked at one point, why does uh, Uncle Les do that? Why does he give everything away? And, and he gives everything away because uh, that's what uh, we've been taught to do, is to share and be generous to other, other people. That's part of our, our, our life is to do that. And uh, uh, we don't really have, uh, in our culture, we really don't have uh, uh, the understanding of, of ownership uh, uh, here. So it's everything is shared. Um, and, and we're taught not to be possessive of our material things. And, and so some of our most sacred things are cherished things that we do pass on. Um, the eagle feather is, is one that, that is, probably one of those highest honors you can give to somebody. Um, uh, and <clears throat> and so, so we're proud to have an eagle feather presented to us, but we're also taught to not become uh, uh, possessive of that eagle feather, that if somebody needs that, that eagle feather uh, or, or uh, deserves uh, that eagle feather, that we pass that on, even though it is it's one of our, our most uh, uh, cherished things. 
and, and that's uh, um, so when you look at all these things connected together, um, it is uh, very, very important to practice them. And when you practice them throughout your life, and I talked about uh, the little baby that was, was chosen to uh, be given these gifts and to, to share them uh, with, with the human beings. Um, uh, they represent that we are that, that little baby and we're given these, these gifts and we, we grow stronger in these gifts as, as we age and get older, we get more wisdom, love, truth, through the deepness of all the seven uh, grandfathers. And, and uh, uh, so really that's what they are. And the more you use them, the more you, 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 you gain wisdom, love and truth. And, uh, um, and it's very, very in our culture that um, uh, our communities survive in this, this way. Okay. Now I'm gonna open it up. If anybody has any questions at all, I just have a one question. Sure. Um, just wondering, like with everything happening in the world, how do you stay true to your values when maybe sometimes it feels like it'd be easier to take a shortcut or just not, you know, be as honest or, or be as giving um, when you feel like you need to look out for yourself a lot more because things are so hard? Yeah, well, I think what, what, what you give out, you get back. And, and it is hard. Um, uh, to do that, and, and we're not all perfect. So when, we're, we're, like, when I'm trying to use the seven grandfathers, I'm not perfect all the time. But when you look at that tree, the tree has branches. So if you make a mistake, you just come back and rely on on that. We all make mistakes. We're not perfect. We're trying to to, to these are our guides, and the more you practice them, um, uh, the wiser and uh, you will feel better. Like I said, when we do things and we know they're wrong um, in our gut, we can convince them, oh, it's okay because uh, we want it or it's the easiest thing to do. So this is where, where I talked at the beginning about how important it is um, um, to be honest, courageous, um, all those particular truth about the truth. So we have to um, look at situations sometimes and think, uh, am I being respectful to this person? Am I being respectful to, to myself? Am I being truthful to myself or truthful to that person? What are, what are my uh, ulterior motives here? Am I uh, giving love through those, those motives or I'm just looking out for me? Um, so these are hard choices, especially when we, 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 uh, we may want something very, very much. Um, and that's why these be, things became very, very complicated. Uh, uh, they seem simple enough, but when you put them all together, so you can make a decision about anything. And I remember one time sitting with my, uh, my uncle, this is uh, down in Eastern Ontario in his kitchen. And uh, um, we were talking about uh, these particular things. Uh, and both my grandparents had moved on to the spirit worlds, so his mom and dad. Uh, and, and we were sitting at this table and it was like one of those old uh, 60s tables. I don't know how you describe it. I had in the kitchen and I had the, the chairs and he was on one end of it and I was on the other. And, and we were talking uh, about this. And uh, all of a sudden my two grandparents appeared sitting in that table together on one side with him and I uh, on each end of the, the uh, 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 table. And they were there and they visited. Our spirits, our ancestors visit us. They like to, to, to come to, to you know, a ceremony and, and uh, feasts and, and they do visit us, everyone. And it was just a short second that they were there and they, they, they I saw that they were listening intently. Um, so part of it is that when we, when we do have, have uh, things that we know, and especially we forget to use our own spiritual instincts, um, like about, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 there's no such thing as a gut instinct. It, it's a spirit helper talking, 
or our spirit helping, uh, helping us to make a decision, poking us and saying, uh, uh, remember, um, do the right things. And I have some stories about that, but I know we are beginning to, to run, uh, run out of time, but that was, that was one of them. And, and we have to mine those, those uh, uh, assistances from our ancestors in regards to that. Um, uh, sometimes you, you, we have, in today's culture, we're not really, uh, uh, it's, our, our spirits have been kind of uh, poo-pooed in a way uh, for medical science. And I'm not saying medical science is bad, but um, we have a teaching um, that we have uh, heart and mind knowledge. And when we look at something, we have to look at it both with our heart or our spirit and our mind. If we're only looking at it with our mind, we don't understand it fully and vice versa. So we, we, we need to, to connect the two, connect our spirit and our mental when we're really trying to learn about um, uh, things. And we can go through, like I said, listen to those, those uh, uh, ancestors, those spirits. And a lot of times that, that what I've been taught to do is at the end of the day, we call them fires, they're fires within sometimes, a fire within them is our, our spirit. And, and sometimes we have to, at nighttime, I don't have to go over a situation uh, that maybe happened that for some reason didn't sit well with me or, or I didn't think I handled it well or whatever. And, and whether it's a, 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 an argument with my wife or, uh, and I find too, that the, the more I, just in regards with my wife, uh, the more uh, I use those things, these teachings, the more I, I, I love my wife and the more she loves me. And, and, and uh, uh, we begin to not have those fights because I've learned through using these teachings that, that whatever is triggering me, I, but you really have to use them to, to uh, am I being respectful to her? Am I being respectful to me? Uh, is it something about, uh, you know, my ego got, got hurt or, or whatever it may be, but to, to even admit that to yourselves takes courage. Um, and and uh, so to put them all together to, to look at uh, how you dealt with the situation is learning, becoming learning, you're taking care of your spirit by doing that because you can go and correct something um, um, or learn from deciphering that, uh, that uh, through the, the, the seven sacred teachings. And, and um, I actually, I carry a little thing in my car on the, the, the visor and, and it, it, all it says is the seven grandfather teachings. Um, and, and I use it because uh, there was a time when I drove that I would, I'd, be, I'd be one of those people, not to yell at people uh, directly, but I would be grumbling and this, you know, and, and I, I would put that down to remind myself that why am I doing that, you know, um, that's not useful for me and not being respectful to me, to the people in the car with me, to the other people that were driving the other car, all those particular, so you can use it in everything every uh, uh, aspect of it. And, and you can get rid of the baggage uh, by uh, having an understanding of, of it. Um, and you can go and correct. And that's what those branches are they, uh, on that tree that you can go back and, and do it. And, and uh, again, it's, it's that, that little baby represents each one of us of going through life and learning these particular uh, uh, gifts. Um, and we gain wisdom again and truth. Um, and love. And that's what human beings are looking for. Thank you so much. That, you're, you're welcome. I hope that, that answered your question. Uh, uh, does anybody else have any, any questions? I, I do have a question, actually. Um, in fact, I, I think you answered uh, quite a bit in terms of like um, what you said about uh, whenever you think about honesty, you have to connect it with spirit, your mind, and your. Um, and your heart, uh, I'm correct. Um, what happens when each of these three 
uh, subsidiaries conflict with each other. For example, your rationale conflicts with what your heart feels and conflicts with, um, with how your spirit perceives things. Um, and I'm not sure if that question makes sense. Yeah, no, totally it does. Uh, what you really have to do is go through each of those, those teachings. And, and be very honest with yourself in regard because sometimes in that particular situation, um, uh, you might want something so much that the conflict isn't between that, uh, between the, the heart mind. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, what you want as, as, as an individual that's conflicting with um, what you know, but you don't really want to admit it. That's true. That's actually, thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. So that's, and that's why, why the seven all work together. You can't have one with the other, without the others, right? So, um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's hard to do. And, and like I said, we're human beings and, and uh, um, uh, we're going to make mistakes. But that's part of the whole teaching that it took that little baby his whole life to learn these things. So his experience is, is teaching us that we, we will have the same experience. Um, and, and, and like I say, I, I, uh, I've been taught that when we do something wrong and we know we've done something wrong, if we don't try to go correct it or, or take responsibility for it, it, is, it leaves baggage, it hurts our spirit. Um, and, it, and it becomes easier to, to not do the right thing. So to, to listen to those, those uh, gut feelings or, or uh, I'll give you a quick example and uh, that when I was about 15, 16, I uh, uh, was, was beginning to drive. Sorry, that's my alarm. Uh, beginning to drive and we were down in my traditional territory and my dad had this old pickup truck. And, and uh, so we were driving and it was, uh, my father says, well, do you want to drive? I said, sure. So I started taking over driving and, and being 15 or 16, um, uh, I, I thought I knew kind of everything or I didn't want to admit that I didn't, you know. So we're driving around the, this one logging uh, road and uh, there was a big, large hill just full of trees, very steep uh, on, uh, on the right hand side where I was driving. And it was a real windy road. So we were coming up to this one turn and you couldn't see any, any uh, it was fairly um, uh, hard curve in the, in, in the road and you couldn't see past whether anything was coming. And my first thought, because it was an experience, um, was that, oh, well, you know, I should go out. But I might lean a little bit to see if I could see something coming the other way. And something in my spirit said to me, you better ask. And that wasn't my character. Um, I wasn't, a, as a 15, 16 year old, I wanted to, I didn't want to admit I was wrong or needed anybody's help. So I asked my father, should I go out far or stay in towards the, the side of the road? He said, stay to the side of the road. As soon as we turned that corner, a logging truck came. If I wouldn't have uh, had that gut, uh, feeling um, or my spirit talking or an ancestor to give me a message, whatever you want to call it, my spirit helper, uh, we would both be dead, you know, and it's that stuck with me because, and I didn't know why at the time, but it stuck with me because it was so un unnatural for me to do that. Um, and I've had many different uh, 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 examples of of, uh, of that in my lifetime, but I've grown to recognize what they are. Um, and uh, um, so again, what, what, uh, what I've been taught too, that a lot of my elders and stuff would tell, retell stories over and over. My dad was a storyteller, but he told the same story 4 billion times. And, and the same with, with some of the elders that, that uh, I, I worked with over, over the years. And, and uh, I learned that they, they do that on purpose. And, and because they stick with you after a while, you don't even know it. But I'm so great, I would get, you know, oh, not that story again. Um, but 
they stuck with me. And I'm so grateful that, that they had the wisdom to, to tell those stories, but I'm getting a little bit off track. Um, so I know that we're time limit, limited. So um, uh, I'll take one more question and then we'll go from there. Thank you again. Okay, I think one of the things you have to look at too is what we're, we're moving into. And I'll just say this quickly is we're a lot of uh, uh, our elders and stuff that believe that we're in the Southern Fire. I won't get into that, but it's about a, a, a having a choice of putting these teachings into practice all over the world um, um, and, and, and going towards a balancing of, of materialism or technology with spiritualism. And, and there's more teachings in regards to the, the seven uh, fire, fire prophecy of the, of the Anishinaabek people. Um, uh, it tells of, of that prophecy. So um, I will end it at that. I, I say, Chimigwis, thank you very much for allowing me to, to talk at, at you for uh, a little bit. And, uh, um, and, it, and it's always an honor to, to, to uh, uh, be asked to do uh, these sort of things. So I hope you guys all have a great, great week we're, we're, and uh, enjoy the sunshine. It looks like spring has sprung. So take care. Thank you, Monique. Thank you, Bob. Josh and everyone, we will see you.